I didn't grow up in a religious background. I didn't grow up in the church. My parents never went to church. My grandparents never went to church. And I remember when I was growing up, a young teenager, my dad got really sick and he was in and out of the hospital several different times. And I just remember seeing him in the hospital and having tubes stuck all throughout his body. You know, he was hooked up to oxygen. He couldn't speak. He, he couldn't talk. He could barely move, barely do anything with me. And I just remember seeing him. And I was in shock and awe of everything that was going on. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. And I remember when the day finally came, you know, where I had to go to the hospital and see him. And he was able to muster out some words to me and talk to me. And I remember it clear as day, like it was yesterday. He said, Scott, be strong. You are about to become the man of the house. No pressure there, right? Then shortly after that, he passed away. And I just remember my mom and my brother. They were in shock and disbelief. They didn't know what to do. Especially my mom. You know, and nobody was there to really console me, you know, to support me, you know, to be there for me in my grief and my pain when my dad passed away because they had their own grief and their own pain that they had to deal with. And I remember shortly after my dad passed away, there was always this church next door to us, this non-denominational church. And I remember somebody at school, he kept on inviting me to come and check it out, come and Come and check out the youth group. You know, it's great. You know, it's a great way that we could hang out and get together. And, you know, I didn't know this kid. And, you know, I kept on telling him, though, until one time I humored him and said, okay, you know, what do I have to lose? I'll go and check it out. And I'm so glad I did because I heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he came to save a sinner like me. And I just remember being in that room, you know, listen to music, listen to the, the pastor preach. And I felt like a black sheep among many white ones. And I knew they had something, they had something special. And I didn't know what it is, but I wanted it. I desired it. And I remember, you know, clear as day, as a friend is talking to you face to face, the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, I took away your earthly father so you could know a heavenly one. So right there at that moment, I traded my hell for his heaven, my sin for his forgiveness, my sorrow for his joy. And I repented of my sin and I turned to the one true living God. And I received Jesus Christ in my life and I believed that he died for my sin and he rose again from the dead and defeated death in his seat at the right hand of the Father in glory and has given me the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And he lives inside of me now. And from that day forward, I began to live for him. I began to read the Bible and just soak it up. I, I started to have regular prayer times and go to church every time the doors were open. And I just remember how Jesus changed my life and how Jesus continues to change my life. And that's not all. You know, shortly after that, I felt the Holy Spirit tug on me to you know, pursue ministry, to be a preacher of his word. And I told God he was crazy. He had the wrong guy. You know, I grew up with like a 1.8 grade point average in high school. I had a speech impediment. I can't even talk. I stutter after every other word. And you want me to preach? You want me to get up there every Sunday morning and deliver your word? And deliver the message to your people? I'm sorry, God, but you have the wrong guy. 
in. I gave them all these excuses. I couldn't afford it. I had no way to get there. I had a 1.8 grade point in high school. How, how would any college dare to accept me? And I remember one by one, God erased all those excuses. So I had a call to set me into their Bible study program. I had, you know, someone offer me a ride to go to college. And I remember I got a check in the mail for $4,020 and tuition was $4,000. And I was still having doubts and concerns about whether God was calling me to ministry. So I attended the Bible college and on the last day I went to my professor's dorm room and I told him about my concerns and my doubts. And he said, well, Scott, let's go ahead and pray about it right now for God's confirmation. And we prayed in his office for God to confirm to confirm his will on my life, whether he wanted me to enter the ministry or not. And before I even get back to the dorm room, after leaving my professor's office, the campus worship leader stops me and tells me that the speaker for this evening's chapel service is ill and he can't make it. And he asked if I could preach the word for that night. Oh, <laughs> if that's not a God moment, I, I don't know what is. And I took that as God's confirmation on my call. And he is a good, good father. And I remember I was still having doubts after I got home in the summer after college. And I was involved in three car accidents. One, I was, you know, driving and somebody ran a red light. And another guy uh, ran the stop sign. And the third car accident, I wasn't even in a car. I was walking on the sidewalk and a car came from behind me and snapped me and sent me like 300 feet. But praise and glory to God, I only broke my leg. But in those months after that, I had a great time of solitude with the Lord that he just continued to drive into me his purpose and plan and his will for my life to pursue ministry. And he continued to remind me about Moses and Gideon and the great patriarchs of the faith. And I remember that one verse that said, you know, do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. And I finally, you know, bent to the will of God and accepted the call of God on my life. And I remember too, in that chapel meeting, where I had to fill in for the sick preacher. I got up there scared and nervous and anxious and all these feelings going throughout me. But I went in faith. I went in courage. I went in boldness and did what God asked me to do. And I kid you not, as soon as I started preaching the word of God, the speech impediment stopped. And it hasn't came back since. All glory and honor and praise do his name. And that's my story and I'm sticking to it.